Hi, and welcome to the Getaway Guru. Today we're headed north to Alaska, and I'm going to share with you the absolutely positively best Alaska cruise shore excursions and tours. I'm going to tell you what to do and what to avoid so that you can max out your Alaska vacation. And I've got an insider travel secret of how and where to save a boatload of money and get all sorts of free stuff on your Alaska cruise. I'm Larry Gelwigs, the getaway guru. Welcome to my travel channel. Now, I'm here to help you travel more and pay less. And if you're new to my travel channel, please remember the big three. Subscribe and then turn on the notifications. That's the little bell you see. And if you like this video, do me a favor. Click on the thumbs up, which is a like. Now, there may be topics about travel that you would like me to do a video on and share my own experiences and background. Well, put in the comment sections the topics that you'd like to hear about. In my 40 plus years in the travel business, I have traveled everywhere. In fact, I used to count countries and when I hit 100, I stopped counting and that was some years ago. Now, in the places that I visit, there are some destinations that I call one and done. I'm glad I went, but I have no need to ever go back. And other places, I can't wait to get back there. Well, Alaska is one of those I can't wait to get back destinations. I mean, I go to Alaska once or twice every year. I see a lot of the same things, sometimes some new uh, things, but I get giddy just with the excitement of going back to Alaska. Alaska is sensory overload. Now, the most popular way to see Alaska is an Alaska cruise, cruising wilderness Alaska. The cruise season for Alaska is May to September. Now, there are a few ships that'll sail late April or even early October, but basically your cruise season is May to September. Now, you're likely to get rain. People always ask me, what about the weather? Well, from Vancouver to Juneau is a temperate rainforest. Now, there's a reason why they call it rain forest. Yeah, you're going to get a lot of rain, but you see the effects of that rain in these beautiful forests everywhere throughout Alaska. Now, if you want to avoid a lot of rain, Go in the months of May and June. That's when they get the least rain, but you'll still get some there because it's a rainforest. Now, there are two basic Alaska cruise itineraries. There's the north-south where you sail from Vancouver to Anchorage or vice versa, Anchorage back to Vancouver. And the second is what I call round-trip Seattle. You'll embark and disembark in Seattle, which makes it very easy for airfare. You can go in and out uh, the same day. There are a few cruises, usually a 10-day cruise that sails round trip for San Francisco, but I can count the number of departures on one hand. So let's focus on North, South, and round trip Seattle. Now, in many respects, they're very similar. The North, South, you'll generally get two glacier days with round trip Seattle, just one but they will all include glaciers, wildlife viewing, and some combination of port visits. You may visit Juneau, Ketchikan, Skagway, Icy Straits, uh, Sitka, or Victoria. Now, you're not going to get them all, but you'll get some combination, usually about four different ports. Well, the four most frequently visited ports are Juneau, Ketchikan, Skagway, and Victoria, British Columbia. So we're going to talk about the very best shore excursions and activities during your Alaska visit to these four cities. Now, before you select your shore excursion or tour, understand this. A lot of the tours are the same in every port. I mean, generally you can find fishing, hiking, gold panning, dog sledding, native Alaska experiences, 
helicopters, float planes, rafting, kayaking, and shopping, shopping, and shopping. By the way, most of the shopping is the same stuff in every port. So if you miss, say, a raft or a float plane ride in one port, you can probably pick it up in the next. You'll be seeing different things, of course, but it'll still be a great experience. So let's move on to Juneau. Alaska's capital with a year-round population of only 32,000. Sure, in the summer months, it swells up with tourists and seasonal workers, but 32,000 Alaskans are living in Juneau year-round. Interesting about the city is you can only approach the city, get into the city by ocean or air. Can't drive. There's no roads in and out. Now, my absolute favorite Juno sightseeing tour is a real easy call. It's whale watching with a stop at the Mendenhall Glacier. The whales come up from Hawaii every year. They winter in Hawaii and then migrate that long distance across the Pacific all the way to the rich waters of Alaska. And Juno is absolutely the best whale watching site for cruise passengers anywhere in Alaska you'll see the humpbacks and pods of orcas. Now, the best months to see the orcas is May and June. And the whales are, are viewed well, say, May through September. But I really like June and July. For me, the best chance to see the bubble feeding and to see the activity amongst the whales. Now, before or after your whale watching experience, I suggest you include a stop at Mendenhall Glacier. It's easily accessible from Juneau. And when you get there, there's a wonderful visitor center with park rangers. And all around the visitor center, there are easy and mostly flat hiking and walking trails. Now, the last time my wife Kathy and I were at the Mendenhall Glacier, we went on one of the walks on an elevated walkway. And we're walking along and we see a black bear feeding on salmon. This actually is a densely populated bear area. And the chances of seeing a grizzly and black bears are excellent. And whilst you're at the visitor's center, be sure to take the short walk down to Nugget Falls. It's also known as the Mendenhall Glacier Falls. It is a huge, spectacular, massive waterfalls, and you can you can walk right up to it. I mean, you can get like up close and personal, and it's situated right next to Mendenhall Glacier. Now, returning to Juneau, there's two other things you might want to consider doing. I like the Mount Roberts Tramway. It's right in the center of town and the tram takes you up the mountain and on a clear day, you just have a spectacular aerial view of the whole area. And a really fun stop for you and the family is the Red Dog Saloon. It's a throwback to the Wild West mining days, sawdust floors, uh, lively entertainment. And don't be put off by the term saloon if you have a family, it's a very family-friendly restaurant and a great place to take the kids, great place to eat there in Juneau. Our next stop on your Alaska cruise is Ketchikan. And I got to tell you, there is so much to do and see in Ketchikan. So how do I limit it to just my one favorite activity and tour in Ketchikan? Well, I got to think, and this is my travel channel, so I guess I can do whatever I want. So I'm going to pick two, my two favorite activities in Ketchikan, Alaska. First, the native Alaskan totem parks is a must-see. There's nothing like it anywhere else in the world. In fact, Ketchikan has two totem parks, Sackman Village and Potlatch. Now, Sackman Village houses the world's largest collection of standing totems. They also have a clan house performance and a carving shed where you can see the masters working on the next totem. Also nearby Sackman Village, there's some wonderful and relatively short hiking trails that'll take you through the rainforest. And by the way, if you do visit Sackman, a very short distance up the road is Herring Cove. Now during season, 
Herring Cove is one of the best bear watching areas during the salmon run. Now at the other end of town is the Potlatch Native Totem Park. I really like this part. It has a very large collection of totems, a carving shed, a museum, and you can, you can walk through it. It seems less commercial, and it is less crowded than Sackman. Well, both of them are wonderful totem parks, and the best part of it, they're both free of charge. There's no admission to Sackman Village or the Potlatch Totem Park. Another favorite Ketchikan activity is a visit to Misty Fjord National Monument. Now, you can go by boat or seaplane and both offer a very different and unique experience. Misty Fjord is home to icy blue lakes, snow-capped mountains, waterfalls, glacier valleys. It's really a fairyland of nature. When you get back to Ketchikan, there's two things I want you to consider. Take a walk along Creek Street. Now, Creek Street is a throwback to the Old West, the mining days, the rough and tumble history that is in Ketchikan. It is a wooden boardwalk built over the Ketchikan Creek. Now, in the old days, it was a pretty lively and risque area, but now it is family friendly with boutiques and shops and restaurants and curios, and it is a beautiful setting right along the Ketchikan Creek. One last thing that you may have time for is the Lumberjack Show. It's situated right in the middle of town, and it's a wonderful show that demonstrates the skill and uh, the techniques that lumberjacks use throughout Alaska. Our next stop is Skagway, Alaska, which is just a really fun, fun, fun visit. So much to see and do. Skagway heralds back to the gold rush era, the town, the buildings. It was a staging point during the 1896 to 1899 Alaska gold rush where 100,000 prospectors came to the Klondike uh, crossing the border into Canada's Yukon Territory. Well, Skagway was the staging point for the miners and prospectors to make their way to the Klondike and seek their fortune in gold. Well, Skagway today maintains some of that anything goes vibe, but in a very safe and fun way. There's a lot of tours, a lot of activities, but the number one is an absolute easy call, maybe my favorite activity in all of Alaska, the White Pass and Yukon Railroad. This exciting two and a half hour excursion will take you in a vintage rail car from downtown Skagway all the way up through the valleys and the mining fields where the prospectors were headed to the Klondike. In fact, you actually cross the Canadian border on this tour right into the Yukon Territory. Now, let me give you an insider secret. The best seats on the train, and it's open seating, so be sure you line up early, the best seats for viewing on the train are on the left side facing forward as you leave Skagway. You'll have the best views of the valley and everything. Now, once you get up to the Yukon, the seats, which, you know, you're seated this way, they actually flip to the other side. And now the best viewing is really in the same seats, but turn the other way the right side facing forward. And to be fair, what they announce is, if you'd been on the left side facing forward coming up, would you please switch to the mountain side? Well, we do this, of course, because it's fair, but here's what I found. Sometimes if you have a large family, you can take both the left and the right side and keep that viewing seat with your family, or sometimes your rail car is not full. So if someone wants to switch with you, of course you do that, to be polite. But sometimes there's nobody to switch, and so you're on the left side going up and the right side coming down, both facing forward. So after your White Pass and Yukon Railway experience, you're going to have a lot of time to explore Skagway, and it does have a very colorful history and lots of shopping there. 
Now, your last stop on your Alaska cruise is likely to be Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. Victoria is located on Vancouver Island, not to be confused with the city of Vancouver, which is on the mainland. Victoria is home to one of my favorite places, the Bouchart Gardens. The Bouchart Gardens are 55 acres of flowers, flora, and fauna located on a 130-acre estate. Now at Bouchart, there are five main gardens, each with a different theme situated amongst the forest and sculptures, waterfalls, and streams. Visitors have been coming here for about 100 years, and now... Annually, the Bouchart Garden sees over 1 million visitors. It's an absolute must-see. Allow a minimum of two hours, but you can easily go three or four hours. Now, here is a challenge for a cruise passenger seeing the Bouchart Gardens. Most Alaska cruises will dock at Victoria between 6 and 7 o'clock at night and then depart around midnight. The Bouchart Gardens is a 40, 45 minute drive from your cruise ship. The sunset in the summer months is usually about 9.15. Now, the best time to view any garden is midday under a full sun. And you just can't do that on most Alaska cruises. You're going to see it in the evening hours and at dusk. And during part of your visit, the flowers will be under lights. Now, it's still worth the visit. It is a spectacular, world-class garden. Another option is downtown Victoria. And in the downtown area, you have, of course, the British Columbia Parliament, the marina, shops, boutiques, restaurants, entertainment, and the iconic Empress Hotel. If you feel like walking, it's an easy, flat walk from your cruise ship to downtown Victoria. It's about a 25 or 30 minute walk. Now there's actually two routes. That's the quickest route. If you want to take a slightly longer route, you'll follow the waterfront. It'll take you through Fisherman's Wharf and right into the downtown area. Now both are easy and safe. There's maps available on the pier. There's also taxis, carriages, and buses available if you don't feel like walking. Victoria, British Columbia, Canada, a beautiful stop on your Alaska cruise. At the start of this video, I promised you some insider travel secrets where you could save a ton of money and get all sorts of free stuff on your next Alaska cruise. Now, airlines, cruise lines, resorts, tour companies are using huge price discounts and all sorts of promotions and free giveaways as an incentive to get us traveling again. So as you're looking at your next Alaska cruise, be sure to shop price, but don't stop there. Shop value. What am I getting for my purchase price? And right now for Alaska cruises, I'm seeing cruise lines give away all sorts of stuff. It's going to vary by cruise line, but I've seen free unlimited drinks, both alcohol and non-alcoholic free Wi-Fi, free cabin upgrades, free shore excursion credits, upscale dining, and on select cruises, a third and fourth passenger sharing the cabin with the first two paying guests. Well, the third and fourth get to go free. They just have to pay the taxes. Now, do keep in mind that all promotions change and are subject to availability at the time of booking. When you're ready to start dreaming and looking at your Alaska cruise, you want to look at good prices, promotions, and all sorts of free giveaways, give us a call at Columbus Travel, 800-373-3328 or online at columbusvacations.com. Thanks so much for joining me today as we explore the exciting ports of call, tours, and excursions on your Alaska cruise. Now, in the description below, there is a link to some of the best Alaska cruise offers and promotions right now. Please remember the big three. Subscribe, turn on the notifications, that's the little bell that you see, and then give me a thumbs up if you like this particular video. And don't forget, if there's a travel topic that you would like me to address and talk about, 
please put it in the comment section. I'll personally reply to you, and who knows, we may have your topic here on The Getaway Guru. Thanks again for watching. Stay healthy, stay safe, happy traveling, and happy cruising.